Today we're in Beaulieu in the south of France, filming what I believe to be one of the most aesthetically beautiful yachts ever produced. I'm talking about the Palmer Johnson 120. When Nuvolari Leonard designed this yacht, they turned around the fortunes of the shipyard and really put them on the map. Now, the specific yacht that we're filming is called Kios. I actually shot it a couple of years ago when she was on the charter market to promote the charter experience on board. But now she's available for sale, so we've come back to take a look all over here. One of the most identifying features of this model of yacht is this whole aft section that slowly slopes up as it goes forward. It's beautiful design, but it's designed with a purpose because this whole beach platform here is wide enough to be able to put some pads on if you want to. It's wide enough to be able to easily step off of the tender and onto the yacht. You'll be amazed at how many yachts have much smaller swim platforms that you need a crew member there to grab hold of you when you get on board. Not the case with the Palmer Johnson 120, but also, of course, it's such easy access to the ocean from here. And you do spend your time at sea to be able to go for a swim, to be able to enjoy that close contact with the sea. But as you move up, this second area here has real purpose to it as well. Not only is this an absolutely lovely area to be able to sunbathe, if you have sensitive skin like I do, it's great to be able to have the shade there as well, but still enjoy being out in the open air. But the whole of this section here also lifts up and you have a lot of storage space in there, big enough even for water toys such as sea bobs, as well as other storage things such as lines and fenders if you want to be able to put them away. Worth noting as well that the forward section of the yacht on the bow, that whole sunbathing area too lifts up for your larger water toys, your, your, your jet skis and such like. Uh, and at the moment the crew are also using it for a lot of storage for a forthcoming trip. So they've got water in there, all kinds of those big items that you wouldn't know otherwise where to put. And then finally, as we come up to the third highest section, it is the perfect spot to be able to enjoy dinner. As you can see at the moment, the table is extended. It also folds into a smaller table according to how many guests you've got and what sort of function you want to use it for. You have a fridge and an ice maker within easy reach. And if it's a little bit too exposed uh, to the sun for you, this is rather a cool feature here above me. There's a whole section there which uh, electrically folds out and extends to give you extra protection from the sun. Let's take a look as well at the sun deck. And this is just a lovely private area to be able to enjoy the company of your friends. Again, you have ice maker, a fridge, so you don't have to keep calling the crew if you just want to be up here on your own, enjoying a little bit of privacy. You have extra sunbathing space there. Worth mentioning that actually when we're filming, the yacht is on our way to Monaco for the Monaco Formula One. This is going to be one of the coolest yachts in the port for the Formula One. And you can have a lot of friends on board because there are so many spaces to be able to enjoy the view of the race and also a little bit of conversation too. The steps I've just walked up though, are really rather cool. Let me explain why. The steps are actually divided into two sections. This upper section lifts up to close the opening to the sun deck, while the lower section rolls over so that you have a much larger work surface to be able to put drinks on or food on while you're enjoying your dinner on the after deck. inside and I'd forgotten just what a beautiful yacht she really is. She seems even more new now than she did two years ago when I last filmed her, which is a, a tribute to the captain, the crew, and of course the owner and his willingness to spend the money it takes for the upkeep of this side of a vessel. It's an unusual layout because generally speaking, when I film a yacht, I walk in and you immediately have the, the lounge area with a dining table further forward and a bar to starboard usually for some reason. Here, it's all the other way around and it works incredibly well. We've got this 
beautiful dining table here for interior dining. And as you can tell, this actually extends out to be much bigger. Then you have the lounge area, the seating area, and this is such a cool feature. I've never seen this on any other yacht. Usually the television will either pop up from the side or dangle down from the ceiling. Here it's actually integrated into this beautiful Wenge wood uh, unit here, which is also used as a coffee table. Then further forward, we come to the bar. And for me, there's something about walking into the boat and seeing the, the table, the lounge, and then the bar at the end, which is just so inviting. And at the end of the day, if you own a yacht like this, you do want to kind of feel good about it every time you walk on board. To finish the presentation of this particular deck, though, we need to take a look at the bridge. And the bridge is a very functional area. I like the fact that they've closed it off because a lot of yachts of this style tend to have it all open and not everybody wants to see the bridge when they're enjoying their, let's say, more luxurious guest areas back there. They've been able to close it off very nicely. There's a door there that leads to the starboard side deck and obviously another door there for the port side deck so the crew can easily access this area. Talking of the crew, the captain was actually telling me that they regularly update the navigational equipment, the latest edition being this Transas chart plotter system. And again, it's a tribute to the fact that the owner is prepared to constantly put the money in that's required to keep the yacht looking brand new and even with brand new equipment as well. So even though the yacht was built a few years ago, you're effectively getting um, almost a better than new boat because it's been sea trial tested, constantly maintained. And the unusualness of the layout continues below deck. As I move through here, we get into the master stateroom. We have a, a nice lobby area uh, with plenty of wardrobe space here and also behind me just here. But just look at the stateroom itself. It is magnificent, not just for the Wenge wood and the craftsmanship that's, uh, that's gone into actually building this yacht, but look at the design features, these three signature circular windows here giving absolutely beautiful views of the outside. It must be a fantastic environment to wake up in. You have a good sized television here, you have a little beauty cabinet uh, just there, but I really wanted to show you the ensuite bathroom. This is quite something. I love everything about this ensuite bathroom. Not just these rather cool, unique looking sinks here, but also look at the shower. That's got to be big enough for practically the whole Red Bull Formula One team. I mean, I wouldn't advise that you do try to get them in there, but it's a big, big shower. And who doesn't love a big shower? Let's take a look at where your guests will be staying on board too. So as we make our way towards the cabins, first of all, it's worth mentioning that through here, we have a day head. Whilst on this side, this is a rather unusual, unusual fold away door here leading to a twin cabin. But notice that there's a second sliding door there too. So if you wanted to, you could practically open this area up. You could use it as a little snug. Uh, I can imagine this as a children's room, a huge television screen for them to watch Pingu or play on the Xbox, depending on their age. Although my older kids still do enjoy Pingu and an ensuite bathroom here as well. There are two further guest cabins, which are pretty much identical to each other, with double beds too. And I would imagine that any guest that you have on board will be very happy with their sleeping uh, arrangements in this cabin or in the other cabin. You've got good wardrobe space, nice television screen to be able to watch a little bit of late night TV, and absolutely beautifully appointed ensuite heads. What about the crew though? Let's take a look at the crew accommodation. Moving down the aft stairwell, we get to the crew quarters, which is far more than just the crew quarters. It's also the galley. Now the galley is fairly compact, but it's very well equipped. When you consider that Kios has had numerous successful charters, all of the guests cared for from this galley, but also the chef was telling me that when they arrive for the Formula One, they'll have 16 guests on board all cooked for from this galley. You can see as well that we have the crew mess. Moving a little bit further forward, we come to a washer and a dryer. And I should mention as well, there's a combination washer dryer just on the entrance there into this area. And then we have the crew quarters themselves. In total, three cabins, each one of course with their own ensuite. 
through here though is the part that I know that many viewers are especially excited to see. That's the engine room. Two MTU engines power this yacht, but one of the impressive things is the way that the engines work together with the hull shape. Incredibly, this yacht, in spite of not being a planing hull, reaches a top speed of 25 knots, which is quite remarkable. More remarkable still is that 15 knots, she has a range of 800 nautical miles. Now, usually people give their range at speeds of 12 knots, at 10 knots, but to be able to give such a high range at 15 knots is real testimony to the design of this yacht. I said at the beginning of this video that the Palmer Johnson 120 is one of my favorite yachts. And that's not just because of the beauty of the design, it's also for the practicality of the design and the intelligence of the design. The way that those engines work together with the hull shape to give such great top speed and such great range too. But probably the thing that stands out the most for me about Kios is how well looked after she is. There is clearly an owner and a crew who take pride in looking after this vessel. I've filmed, I don't know, maybe a hundred or more different yachts with Northrop and Johnson, and I've noticed that it's the yachts that get really well looked after that usually sell sooner than the ones not so well looked after. And that's because when you buy a yacht, of course you have to go to survey, and if issues are found in the survey, it delays and sometimes jeopardizes the sale. Kios is a yacht that will go to survey with no fear whatsoever. She has an absolutely faultless service record that you can request to hear about and to see. The engines have been well looked after and maintained. Everything has been cared for on this yacht. If you want more details and if you want to come and take a look at her for yourself and you are a qualified buyer, you can do no better than contacting one of my two friends and colleagues, Richard Callender and Richard Higgins who represent the owner of this yacht and can help you to find out more about her.